intro. More than 50 years ago, we ventured to the moon and now we look back to our own planet. Since then, the human population has been doubled. In this presentation, we'll celebrate the natural wonders that remain and reveal what we must preserve to ensure that humans and nature will thrive. As we all know, small fish uh, sustain the bigger ones and hunters, when come together, become strongly efficient. The rich coastal sea is the fishing ground of our planet and can provide an abundance of food for wildlife as well as for humanity. Good day everyone, I am Ronilin Tabayag and in this presentation, I'll be discussing the special properties that affect marine life. Well, basically, this is the first part of the chapter that has been assigned to us, which is obviously the chapter 1 of the book Biological Oceanography. As I continue, here are the main points of our presentation for the rest of the chapter. We have here the first part, which is the introduction, and the special properties affecting life in the sea, classifications of marine environments and marine organisms, the basic archaeological terms and concepts, the historical development of biological oceanography, and lastly, the summary of the chapter 1. As we all know, the vast body of salt water covers almost three-fourths of the Earth's surface. It was stated in the book that the ocean occupies almost 71% of the Earth's surface. The deepest part down on sea floor is like almost 11,000 meters from the sea surface. Grabe ang lalim. So the name given to our planet, which is obviously the Earth, is a synonym for a dry land. But it is a misnomer in that, that it does not describe the dominant feature of the planet. So, alam naman natin na ang dominant feature ng planet natin, which is, is obviously is the vast expanse of blue water or tinatawag nating ocean. So, why are we discussing this? It is because there are some of the factors that affect the marine life and how animals thrive in the ocean. Dito natin uh, malalaman yung different factors and yung mga nabanggit ko na nauna are some of the reasons kung bakit merong uh, buhay sa dagat na hindi nakaka-survive at meron din yung mga nananatili. Marine and terrestrial environments provide a very physical conditions for life. Um, water is also a fundamental constituent of all living organism and it close to being the universal solvent. Alam naman natin kung ano yung solvent and the temperature of the ocean does not vary as drastically as it does in air. Dito, yung earliest organisms are believed to have originated in the ancient oceans many millions of years before any forms of life appeared on dry land. So, nag-umpisa talaga yung um, existence, the umano ng mga species sa dagat. So, all known phyla, both extinct and extant, originated in the sea, although some of later migrated into freshwater or terrestrial environments. Today, there are more phyla of animals in the oceans than in freshwater or on land, but majority of all described animal species are non-marine. The difference in the number of species believed drew uh, largely to the greater variety of habitats on land. As you can see here, here are some photos of all living organisms that benefit all the ocean could offer. So basically, we humans are also um, gaining something from the natural things that's being offered by the ocean. Majority of marine plants are microscopic, uh, floating species, and many marine animals are invertebrates without massive skeletons and fish ha that have small bones. So you can see here um, the two photos. This is an example of microscopic plant. This is a phytoplankton, one of the types of the planktons. And alam naman natin na planktons are considered as drifters kasi din nadala lang sila ng alon or ng waves. Uh, invertebrates naman without massive skeletons. Ito makikita natin yung example sa pictures. On the other hand, certain properties of the sea are less favorable for life the conditions on land. Uh, plant growth in the sea is limited by light because only about 50% um, of the 
total solar radiation actually penetrates the sea surface and much of this disappears rapidly with depth. So alam naman natin na ang light plays a viral role enable for a plant to survive. And yun na nga, as stated, na 50% lang ng total radiation yung nakaka-penetrate sa surface ng sea. Marine plants can grow only within the sunlight surface region which extends down to a few meters in turbid water or at the most to several hundred meters depth in clear water. Uh, the vast majority of the marine environment is in perpetual darkness, yet most of the animal life in the sea depends either directly or indirectly on plant production near the sea surface. Nung kadalasan nakadepende yung survival ng mga animals sa kung ano yung um, plants or yung pagkain na available malapit sa kanila. Limited lang yung plant growth sa certain areas sa sea and the availability of essential nutrients na kailangan ng mga, um, it's either um, flora or fauna to survive such as nitrates and phosphates. The uh, quantity of these are present in a very small quantity lang in seawater compared with the concentrations na makikita sa soil. On land, um, nutrients required by plants are generated nearby um, the decaying remains of earlier generations of plants. So, in the sea, much decaying matter sinks to depths below the surface zone of plant production, and nutrients released from this material can only be returned to the sunlit area by physical movements of water. Um, the greatest environmental fluctuations occur at near the sea surface where the interactions with the atmosphere results in an exchange of gases. Uh, it produces um, vibration, so temperature, and salinity, and create water turbulence from winds. So, deeper in the water column, conditions become more constant. So, yung nagiging constant or nagiging stagnant yung condition but mas malalim yung vertical gradients in the environmental parameters are predominant features of the oceans and they establish depth zones with different types of living conditions and not only does light diminish with depth but temperature decreases to a constant value on the other hand um, hydrostatic pressure increases with depth and nutrients become more concentrated because of the depth-related changes in environmental conditions, many marine animals tend to, restrict, to be restricted. On the horizontal scale, naman, geographic barriers within the water column are set by physical and chemical differences in seawater. Uh, much of this text deals with the descriptions of marine communities and interactions between physical, chemical, and biological properties that determine the nature of these associations. Um, some attention is also given to the exploitation of marine and biological um, resources. And despite the fact that the ocean occupies almost three quarters of the Earth's surface, only 2% of the present total human food consumption comes from the marine species. Uh, totally Yung 2% na yan, it helps um, entirely the humanity in order for us to survive. And however, this is an important um, nutritional source because it like represents about 20% of the high quality animal protein consumed ng mga human diet. Um, although a greater total amount of organic matter is produced annually in the ocean, compared to land, um, the economic utilization of the marine production is much less effective. And one of the branch of biological oceanography, which is fisheries, oceanography, is rapidly developing a field that addresses the issue of fish production. And as we all know, na ngayon na issue yung overconsumption ng isda, as well as yung hoarding ng mga marine life, and sadly, there are some pa din na nakakalasot with this um, certain um, issue. So the term marine or and aquatic pertains to water in general. However, marine is specific to those things in and around the ocean or seawater. Marine life encompasses a broad range of plants and animals living in various ocean ecological systems throughout the world.
As I've stated, numerous things can affect marine life, including the temperature, the ocean currents, and the sea's um, chemical balance. The changes in the ocean temperature can be attributed to the numerous factors, including the general climate condition and the Earth's tectonic plate um, and any core activities as well as global warming. The rising temperatures caused a bleaching effect to the corals, forcing its marine population to find a new home and find um, food sources. And an increase in temperature also increases the amount of zooplankton in an ecosystem which through a domino, um, like a domino effect adversely impacts the food chain with that system. Also, yung ocean currents, it has a great impact on marine life um, by transporting um, yung mga sinabing earlier, yung microscopic um, organisms. They affect the ecosystems by circulating surface heat and distributing nutrients and oxygen throughout the ocean. And of course, yung chemical balance, it's the vibration in the sea's chemical composition and it's very common due to the factors um, including yung pollution, yung atmospheric conditions and physiological changes. Ito yung mga physiological changes of marine life, so, yung sinabi na kanina yung decaying and yung mga biological emissions. Yung salinity will vary among the marine ecosystems. Is a sustained increase or inconsistency in saline levels can prove to be de uh, detrimental to some marine species that are more salt intolerant. All life on Earth is connected to the ocean and its inhabitants. So the more we learn about the issues facing these vital systems, the more we educate ourselves, the more we want to help and ensure its health. And we'll have this chance to share our knowledge and educate others or inspire them to help us maintain the beauty of ocean. That would be all.